Hey everyone, welcome to The Roundtable with Vienna White, Season 1, Episode 51. I'm your host, Millie Rouge from the band Vienna White here in Edmonton, Canada. This Roundtable is a Yeg Music production. Let's get to introducing you to our guests we have on today. Our very first guest I'd like to introduce you to is Soulful Clay from Cape Town, South Africa. We have Neptune, our next guest from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> and our last guest we have on today is Cardboard Boxer, one of the members from San Diego, California. So welcome everybody. We're so glad to have you all on today. Thank you for coming on. Um, I just want to start off the conversation by asking how your, uh, how your weekend has been so far. What has it been like for you all? It's a very hard question, I know, but oh, how God. has it been? <laughs> Uh, my weekend's been quite, it was pretty cool. I took some mental health time and just spent mm -hmm. time with family. And yesterday we went protesting. So yes. it was pretty cool. That's my amazing. family was scared that I was going to lose my voice because I was very loud. <laughs> so, You're screaming, well, I love like, it. Oh, yeah. And he was like, he's going to lose his voice. And I was like, I might, but it'll come <laughs> but back. But it's okay. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually attended in Edmonton here. We had a protest as well. Um, on our kind of like our legislator uh, government building and there was over 15,000 people so it was, it was quite the quite the event wow. yeah what was your That's turnout crazy. kind of like Neptune it was I was there last weekend and it was already a lot of people the first day I had went it wasn't too many it seemed like because um, we have mm -hmm. a civic center park here and it's it's a amphitheater it's a whole park but the amphitheater mm -hmm. it was like the final meeting place and it wasn't as many people the next day it looked like we packed it out and I came back this weekend and <laughs> I couldn't even make it to the middle at one point. It was, <laughs> it was remarkable to see. That's awesome. I was, I was yeah. thoroughly happy to see everything. Yeah, absolutely. How about yourself? Uh, Soulful Clay, what's it been like for you down in uh, South Africa there? <laughs> um, yeah, like in South Africa, we've been on lockdown, like with quite strict, uh, strict mm -hmm. movements. Like we can't really go anywhere. But recently, the government let us down to level three lockdown. Mm. And you basically like, you you are allowed to live normal, but there's no social gatherings. Yeah. Uh, the selling of cigarettes and any tobacco products are banned. So a lot of people really? get this from the black market. Only last week, I think last week, Friday, we had uh, the sale of liquor permitted again. So wow. the country, like no one has been drinking alcohol. And <laughs> as soon as they opened up liquor stores again, you can imagine what oh, yeah. the roads are like, the, <laughs> what the atmosphere in a lot of places are like. Mm -hmm. Because like in South Africa, our country, is, <laughs> we, are, we are quite united by alcohol, which is hectic. Most of our biggest sports events are sponsored by mm -hmm. SAB. The, the cricket ICC, it's sponsored by Castle. The Rugby World Cup, it's funded by, yeah, a, lo a lot of alcohol companies. Yeah. So <laughs> That's so interesting. Um, but for me personally, it's been, I've had a really um, relaxed weekend. I've just mm -hmm. been at home working and trying to finish off some beats and stuff. Yeah. I'm just keeping busy. Yeah. Yeah, keeping busy with your music. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and uh, my friend Thomas here, how has it been for you for you in San Diego, California? <laughs> uh, it's not it's not so bad here. I um since the quarantine's been going on and we can't play any shows, I, I picked up a couple extra shifts at work. So mm. I I worked uh, I worked all night last night. I got up at like seven this morning at, as well. That's why I'm still in bed right now. But... Oh man. <laughs> I'm surprised you're awake <laughs> oh, with us God. here. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I to, uh, just background a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Shay, I think Shay, Shay was supposed to do the interview, but yeah, he, he had to go to a memorial in Arizona, oh, okay. and he called. He called me like forty five minutes ago. It was oh, no. Like, we, I, like I, I was supposed to be a Wi Fi, but we had to leave and do uh, this. So, it's like, bad. yeah, I, I'm good, dude. I'll, well, I'll yeah, get up for a bit. We're happy to have you here, regardless. That's thank you for doing uh, that. <laughs> well, this this is wonderful. I'm so I'm so it's so nice to talk yeah. to people who are all over the world. So Absolutely. thanks for having me. Yeah, I have. I don't think I've ever talked to someone honestly, except for last week. I had a guest, but I don't think I've ever talked to anyone from South Africa. So this is a very cool experience. <laughs> very <laughs> cool experience. Yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Overrated. It's so overrated, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. So I actually just want to quickly talk about each of your musical journeys individually. I kind of want to get to hear more about what you do as a musician because I myself have never met you before. Um, so whoever wants to kind of take the, the talking stick first, you kind of want to tell us a little bit more about your music project and kind of how you got to where you are today and what you're currently working on with your music. So whoever wants to go first, Neptune, do you want to take it? Oh no, I just like raised my hand. Like I'm in third grade. You're like, I'm ready. I, didn't. I, I was like, it. I didn't it's know respectful. if someone was going to talk or not. No, you go for um, it. You go for it. Um, well, um, I got started. Um, I've literally always been writing songs. I was the kind of kid who would sit by the fence or like on the playground and would tell kids I can't play because I have to finish a song. I was like that serious as a kid. <laughs> Um, so I really got, uh, started professionally, um, out here in Denver, um, mm -hmm. about 2016. Um, I think I played my first show with my own music, um, in 20, yeah, December 26, 2016. Um, and literally a month later started playing shows back to back every week. And, uh, unfortunately started college at the same time which is a waste of my time because I was only going because music wasn't moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. If I had waited a few months, I would have been fine. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was playing at an art gallery um, out here called Denver Art Society. And we, my friends and I are throwing shows every week, sometimes playing shows multiple times a week. And within six months of me starting, I had actually just starting my career. I had performed in front of, thousands at Civic Center Park out here uh, for Denver Pride Fest um, and been doing that the past uh, three years. Um, really was pushing my, I was moving at a very fast pace. Um, and by the end of 2017, I was like, uh, I want to switch things up. At the same time, I was like falling back into habits. It was, I was moving out for the first time. So I fell back into drugs and alcohol and it's still very young, which was crazy that I even said fell back into, but fell back into it. Um, and kind of my whole, my mute, my whole sound changed. I mean, changed how I wanted it to, but I mean, just came back even harder by mm -hmm. 2018. I moved out, um, playing shows, releasing music nonstop all of 2018. Um, had some life things going on and almost had to move across the country uh, oh, wow. to Atlanta. Um, sure. And by 2019, I had, I guess, solidified myself into the city. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was, I was mainly modeling and I was make, getting more traction mm -hmm. um, for what I do. A little more back history. I'm a singer, songwriter um, and producer, both in film and in music. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm an actor and director as well, um, and professional dancer. Um, so a lot of just about 99.9% .9 of everything I do is in house. And it's extremely rare of something that yeah. I jump on. I did, I don't have like, I didn't create <laughs> cause I rarely do features. So mm -hmm. I'm just about everything I do. I, I create and it's my vision. Yeah. Um, so 2018, I put out a short film and it was like the official first kind of like the official first uh visual for me um it's always like i i'm the kind of person you either go big or go home my family's from texas so ah. <laughs> you go bigger you go home so i put out a 13 minute short film <laughs> and i was like awesome. i loved your music video and i'm like i'm pretty sure you watched the whole 13 minutes and you found out that was not a music video <laughs> um, so, that's awesome um, i had played uh pride again in 2018 i had backup dancers for the first time was learning how yeah. that works came yeah. back 2019 and I did really only put out like five songs last year mm -hmm. and um I had put out a song called Electric Cowboy and it I was kind of pushing it just I was like well let me do what every artist out here is not doing mm -hmm. and push and put my focus um into a song into one single yeah. like I'm already famous I think I'm already famous. I think everyone just doesn't know who I am. <laughs> and I love it. so I had put my focus into that song and was riding it pretty much literally until the wheels fell off. Mm -hmm. And literally it led up to me performing it at Pride Fest. And it was a momentous occasion. I get chills thinking about it. 
um, and then wound up putting the music video out for it um, in October of 20 of last year. Um, had a nice premiere party. It was nice and luxurious, which was, I didn't expect it to be like that. My friends were like, we're throwing you a party. And I was like, okay. And I got there and I was like, all right, this is kind of bougie, but. Best uh, friends ever. I, uh, <laughs> right, best friends ever. I'm not going to deny the bougie-ness. Um, uh, was at this time, I was really working all of last year. I was working just about seven days a week, every mm -hmm. single week. I was a go-go dancer mm -hmm. and uh, working in Chipotle to fund my career. So I was, I was on an adrenaline rush for months on end and didn't know I was working seven days a week for like two and a half months. Wow. And on top of this, I, my schedule's full. Like I have photo shoots just about every other week. I <laughs> have rehearsals every single week. I'm still writing songs, still making, like, I have a full schedule and everyone's around me like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm better than I've been in my whole life. <laughs> they're like, when's the last time you had a day off? I was like, I think like last month. Last and year I maybe. Did, you know, and it didn't even phase me. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Really just, I stopped working at the club and due to personal reasons, I mm -hmm. did not feel valued, really was not being valued for my creative talents. So I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to go ahead and chuck a deuce. Um, yeah. Left and then my whole life, it seemed like it just like stopped so abruptly and I was not used to that. Mm -hmm. And so really just took a step back and I just started making, I was of course still making music, but I was like, what is going on? Like, what do I have to say? And I was like, yeah. what do I need to say? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much just, I need to start learning my worth, which is mm -hmm. I'm still learning to this day. <laughs> yeah. And it was self-love and self-worth, you know? And I mm -hmm. wish someone would have said that when I made the music, because yeah. I probably, because <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm like, damn. But <laughs> I got back in the studio and started making such aggressive yet such mm. soulful music and it was only three songs mm -hmm. um and the project is called 369 and i was really i'm a, i'm a very spiritual person so mm. um the the project played on the ideology of as above and so below so i was like why not make a song that doesn't start with as above so you start with below and then you go above and you have a healthy medium you know mm -hmm. um pretty made another music video i think it's a music video it's on it's still it's nine minutes <laughs> but it's still nice it's a nice healthy video with a great storyline awesome. <laughs> and so i put that out got to drop it while i was on vacation um and it was pretty cool it came out a few days after my birthday um and since then just been on the path to sobriety which has mm -hmm. been a bitch mm -hmm. but i am appreciative mm -hmm. for it i'm five no, months geez. sober now Congratulations. And That's congrats, great. Congrats, dude. Thank you. Because yesterday I was real close and I was like, all right, <laughs> we need to chill. We need some water right now. Um, I had, I put out uh, an official song this year, um, but I released a demo because I was like, it's quarantine. I need to put something mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Boom. Um, and in the meantime, just been pretty much, I have, I've still been working on music, but I'm like, um, I'm watching a global, yeah, I'm watching a global civil rights movement right yeah. now. So I'm like <laughs> a part of a global civil rights yeah. movement. So I'm like, <laughs> You're going I through don't it. think music is the first thing I'm trying to put out yeah. unless it really has something to do to light a fire under everyone's ass to keep yeah. the momentum. And it's yeah. like, you know what, when that time comes, it'll come. So in the mm -hmm. meantime, I am a resilient protester <laughs> yeah no that's it sounds like you have such an amazing career so far and you have so many things ahead of you that are amazing to hear so thank you for sharing um so full clay i kind of want to hear a little bit more about your background i, I was kind of instagram instagram creeping you last night um but can you tell us a little bit more about your journey and kind of how you got to where you are today with music <laughs> um, yeah so my journey is quite a short long one so i in high school, I, I played a, a few instruments, uh, classically trained on the piano, and the guitar kind of just came naturally. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it was like a first love instrument. Like, as soon as I touched it, like, I kind of, like, just developed uh, the skill for it without, like, the real training. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to a point where I had to decide mm -hmm. what am I going to do one day, and I decided to study accounting. Mm -hmm. And that was like the worst mistake of my life. Like I went to university, like first year and second year, like every corner, just dodging music, trying to avoid mm -hmm. it. And then mm -hmm. 
second year, I just like I dropped out and I said like, yo, I'd rather eat sardines than study this accounting that's going to lead me to being 40 years old with a bad <laughs> tech life and yeah, just like bad choices. Um, yeah, like I, I didn't see that trajectory going too well for me. Mm-hmm. And I decided to somehow pursue music. And at this point, I hadn't really been in the studio. I hadn't really like done anything musical. And this was like maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I started producing on my laptop, producing beats. And the first time I ever got the conference to write a song mm-hmm. and actually finish it and yeah. show it to someone. That was maybe like at the end of second year. And yeah, I think last year, last year, like halfway through the year, I was working at this crappy retail store, like this train retail store. And like life was just not going anywhere. And I met an old friend and this old friend was, his brother was a musician and he's still a musician. And like, he was like, yo, we're going to make music. Like my friend has some studio equipment. Let's get together. And we got together. And yeah, ever since then, it's just been like a quite a stepping stone. A lot of... Mm -hmm. A lot of good things, a lot of bad things. Played my first few gigs last year and it led to a great momentum. Um, ended up getting funding for a studio, um, nice. like private funding, awesome. like good funding yeah. to build my own yeah. studio. And like from like six months ago, like I never really like saw it going here. And yeah, it led to lockdown now. Um, <laughs> I've just been locked in producing and trying to like level up because I had all these gigs planned up, like lined up. Mm. And I like, I had plans with the money. I was like, yo, I'm going to do this with that. When yep. that money comes in, I'm going to do this when that money comes in. And ironically, the first week of lockdown, I had an international gig, a mm. gig for German, people from Germany having a conference here in, in Cape Town, South Africa. And it got cancelled and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like, I'm losing all this money. But whatever I lost in monetary form, I definitely gained in skill. Mm. Um, yeah, from just being in lockdown and yeah. developing a thick skin and trying to shine and use what you can when you when there's no when it's when it's dry out here when it's dry season you know yeah, yeah. Um, trying to trying to make something out of nothing um, mm-hmm. and yeah now I started doing like beat tutorials on on my Instagram just to like show artists that the process doesn't have to be as difficult as you make it. There are formulas to these things that you can um, that you can follow, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's gaining some good traction on my Instagram, um, on my Instagram mm-hmm. account. But yeah, as soon as I'm out of lockdown, <laughs> I am definitely tuning into project mode, and yes. definitely not stopping. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I totally, I totally. I think we all kind of feel that as musicians, we're all just itching to to get back out there, but we have to patiently be waiting. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a struggle. Uh, now, my friend, uh, Cardboard Boxer, I want to hear more about your band. Again, I was also creeping you too, and I noticed you guys have like a crazy onstage live performance uh, <laughs> presence, but I want to hear kind of more about how your band got started and how you guys are, are doing now with your project. Well, um, so I met, I met the singer of our band, Shay, probably like 11 years ago now we were in sixth grade together and uh, mm-hmm. both of us grew up playing guitar and stuff and we we always wanted to be in a band so instantly we we kind of like met up and clicked and we made a band together we uh we picked up our drummer a couple years later and like still in middle school like seventh or eighth grade and we we played we played in metal bands throughout high school and i, I think near uh near the end of high school is when we we got together with this band and uh we uh, we just kept going with like the same lineup we had uh mm-hmm. recently our our bassist is going to uh, our old bassist he, he had to go off to nursing school and stuff mm-hmm. so we just we brought a new guy in and it's been great we, we've just been writing music and it, and it feels like it's coming so naturally mm-hmm. um and like yeah the live show is always so much fun which is it's been it's been such a bummer the last three months with everything going on and can't can't do any of that but i i feel like it's we're, we're just trying to make the best of it you know like um we've been really working on on our we're recording our, our like an ep right now so we've just been like putting everything into that so that mm-hmm. that way when we can come back to that live performance we can yeah we can really like have something for people to grab onto you know you're ready yeah you're ready to you're ready to pump it out in their faces <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's amazing world. yeah absolutely <laughs> um so i want to actually jump into our topic of the day so i have a few questions about our topic of the day which is putting in the work so i think you all mm 
described really well already in your introductions, kind of how you put in the work. Um, but I have some specific questions I want to kind of get to. So I'm going to ask the question, whoever wants to start off first, just jump into it. Or if you want a minute to think, no problem. Um, but my first question is, what do you think are some simple ways that artists can put in the work to start seeing success in their career? So kind of that step where they take it from taking it as a hobby to actually being like, okay, I'm going to put in the work. And I'm going to see what I can get out of this. So I'm curious to know what you guys kind of think about this. Yep. Oh, who was going to go? <laughs> oh, it's on you, bro. <laughs> oh, go for it. Got it. <laughs> um, when you start financing your career is when you start taking yourself seriously and mm -hmm. paid promotion mm -hmm. is what's going to get things mm -hmm. moving yeah. at the end of the day. Because I think a lot of people, they, they're they still under this uh, illusion that a lot of things, because they're not necessarily, they just don't have the information or the access to the knowledge that mm -hmm. it's a business from start to finish. Yeah. So you pay for, you can pay for views, you can pay for numbers, you can pay for streams, you can pay for plays, and you can pay Ola still, it's quiet as kept. You can pay for promotion so you can get yourself out there you pay for ads you pay for mm -hmm. uh likes pay for follows it's to get your numbers matter in this business so get your unless you are just a rebel and you refuse to <laughs> i mean that is the way yeah absolutely uh soulful clay what did you have to add about this yeah like for me i'm um... I'm definitely with you on that. I, I do think a lot of people, they don't have a plan. Um, they're just mm -hmm. like shooting darts and there's not even like a dartboard that they're shooting at. There's no target. Mm -hmm. There's no, <laughs> yeah, when you reach this by then, you know, it's yeah. just waiting for someone to do, call you one day and like tell you, hey, I'm signing you to this big record label. But yeah. like yes. not understanding like, <laughs> the aspects. We're just waiting for this big opportunity, the big yeah. break. It doesn't actually exist. Um, yeah. I also think a lot of people need to practice how they play because what I've been doing is like, I've been writing a song a day for like, mm -hmm. I think for 21 days, I wrote a song a day, even mm -hmm. though like it might not be released, but it's always good to just practice and yeah. not just do it for the sake of putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Kind of just refining your craft because once yeah. you take it seriously to that level, there's no stopping you because like, it's like either the talent will, will just get you there or like, or any other like, aspects of your hard work to get you there yeah. but once you you put that hard work in your craft like it's it's just so much easier it's effortless like mm -hmm. it's way better in the long run yeah it's just like sports too like people think that you can just become like a, a professional soccer player in two days and it's like no that's not how it works <laughs> you actually have to train and craft and <laughs> like build your muscles like it's the same thing with music right like <laughs> um like on the playstation you can do it. yeah Exactly. Same thing. There's so many things in life that have this motto that I think sometimes musicians, musicians think they can just kind of skip past, unfortunately. Um, my next question here actually is kind of relates to this, but um, what are some things that you've seen some artists try and skip or try to avoid while climbing up the ladder of their success? And why do you think that skipping steps in the hustle is bad or a good thing? So just kind of tell me through your experience, maybe what you've seen that people have been trying to avoid or work around is kind of my basically my question a hard times yeah. <laughs> everyone wants to skip over the struggle they want yeah. to be able to talk about the struggle without actually having to go through and i was literally about to say that mm -hmm. <laughs> talk about it <laughs> You guys are on the same page. Um, yeah. Cardboard Boxer, kind of, I know you're in a punk scene, so I'm curious to know if there's anything you've seen compared to our other two friends here that's a little bit different and maybe what people have tried to avoid while getting up to that level of success. Um, yeah, I mean, like they said, a lot of people just don't want to go out and do the grind and play the shows. And like, I, we went on tour last um, <laughs> what, January, like right before the lockdown. And it was just like, it, it's really a grind, man. Like for, we're fucking... <laughs> four guys or i'm sorry i don't know I should that's okay first, but we're, <laughs> <Go for laughs> we're, we're, we're four four guys sleeping in a van together and it, like i mean i love it i, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world but it, it's rough sometimes and you got to yeah. put yourself through it and, and like neptune said a minute ago like uh if you're you're putting like a lot of money and a lot of time into recording your music and doing something you love you also have to be willing to put money into marketing that and like getting it out yeah. there and making mm. sure people hear it you know mm -hmm. so 
it's all about mm-hmm. the, it's all about the grind like no one's gonna come and I'm, I mean maybe if you're if you're like Justin Bieber someone will come and pick you up and make you street. famous but, <laughs> but right. nine, 99.9% of the time you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have to do it yourself and you can't mm-hmm. expect someone to do it for you yeah mm-hmm. I think this concept of like um, producers just finding you is a very like vintage Thing. Like I think that maybe in the 50s or the 30s that was what happened, but I think for the, right. a long time people still think like I hear my parents say to me they're like, oh just send your music to the radio it, that's how it works right like it'll get played I'm like, where are you hearing no. this this doesn't no. exist anymore so I think no. it's been especially local with radios the, yeah like student college radios maybe but if I'm yeah. lucky <laughs> but I think it's this really old concept that needs shifting because we are in the tech technology world so you really have to kind of shift from that thinking sense for sure the record labels own the radio stations exactly exactly <laughs> yeah um so in, in your opinion, do you think that a lot of artists settle with mediocre work when they just want to move faster? Yes. <laughs> Neptune's oh, got yeah. some feelings. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> just head. No. <laughs> Neptune, I I'm see. curious to start with you. What do you think? <laughs> I feel bad because you're going first. <laughs> I say this with... Mm, what I'm about to say is so <laughs> reckless at the same time. That is literally what I'm known for. Um, I live in Denver, Colorado. The only great musicians mm. to come out of Denver, Colorado are Earth, Wind, and Fire. Pretty oh, much the whole yeah. That's yes. it. That's Ooh. it. And we're talking about legendary Earth, Wind, mm-hmm. and Fire. That's it. Mm. I love Earth, have, Wind, and Fire. They're <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> like, great, dude. Yeah. Like, sometimes, like, if you know music theory, I think there's one song in particular, it's not even in one set key, and it just keeps escalating mm. every mm-hmm. like couple like not even whole notes but like half notes and like or half steps and it's just like how do you keep up with this yeah i have been mm. out here since 2017 and well 2016 and around that time if you look back in music it was a lot of mumble rap that was really mm. hot at the time and it was still coming out if you look back mm. at it there was some rum- mumble rap that was actually really hard if you love hip-hop and you listen back you're like all right that shit was really fire yeah. But at the time, it's like you had people who were famous and they busted, they asked to get to the, where they were, but they signed 360 deals. Mm. So they had to do what they record label said. Right. <laughs> and, but you had them portraying this image that, oh, yeah, all you got to do is talk about a Patek. All you got to do is talk about a Draco, how mm. many bitches you have, mm. how much lean you sip, mm. how many Zans you popped. Mm. And you have the keys to success. Yeah. So you have my black ass on this stage in five and a half inch boots, literally wrapping microphone cords around my neck and screaming at the top of my lungs while still trying to be controlled because I was trained in this, I was just a vocal major. I still try, like just giving literal blood, sweat and tears on stage mm-hmm. and then wondering like, what the fuck is going on? And then you had these 17 year old kids who were, it was kind of cool to watch though who thought that they had the keys and they had these egos and I, they would get off stage and they see me and my friends like, Oh, thanks for having us on your show. And then we would just tell them like, even though we were literally all just starting, we're like, look, you need to like, let go of your ego mm-hmm. now. Oh, use your mm-hmm. ego at given times you're in rap. So you need it to rap, but yeah. your everyday life drop that shit. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even still today, like I'm, I, I, I won't say names, but it's just you cross paths with people and they do bare minimum or their music just isn't like up yeah. to par and they have this God mm. complex mm-hmm. thinking that like they have the keys to success and it's like you seriously need to like sit in a studio and not even your own session and listen to a sound engineer yes. really go to town. Mm-hmm. Mm. even with that you need to be like around some really good sound engineers who actually know what the hell they're doing because yeah. i'll be sit, i'll have people send me music or try to get me on things and i'm like yo who the hell recorded this dude your low end <laughs> is ridiculous you sound muffled your high end when it does so come in, it's screaming mm-hmm. like did you pay where the fuck did you record, dude? <laughs> Get your money back. back. <laughs> Get your money back, bro. And so it's mediocre. People think um, mediocre is the shit. And yeah. I'm like, it is shit. 
Don't get it confused. <laughs> Sorry, I have some amazing such strong <laughs> views. No, I, I love to hear it. I love that I picked a nerve because that's the that's the truth I want to hear. <laughs> I don't want this like sugar coated stuff. I want the truth. <laughs> Oh, um, so um, full clay. I kind of want to hear what you think about mediocre work. Do you experience this a lot in South Africa, or do you find it's different? What's kind of your opinions on it? Do you know it's funny? Like, <laughs> so in South Africa, our market isn't big enough for everyone to do one specific genre. Like, mm. it's not big enough for that. But mm. what you find in South Africa is like so many people do mumble rap like it's crazy like yeah they the, the there's no <laughs> there's no solid basis of artistry like it's difficult to to stay in the game very long if you don't have a solid base of artistry that's why Kanye West uh, Jay-Z mm -hmm. Beyonce they can stay in the game so long because yeah. they have a solid base mm -hmm. of where the music stems from yeah. if you just heard a few low peep songs a few low Wayne songs and suddenly you're taking that's your influence. You don't have a solid, you're kind of just mimicking what they're saying. Mm. It's a bit difficult for you to have longevity in the game. Yeah. That's why Pharrell yeah. is a multi lane artist because he can do so many things. Pharrell could do a song with Kid Rock and it would be fire because he has that ability to, mm. to, to just, he can sit with anyone and make a song because he understands he has a solid base of music. Now in South yeah. Africa, it's exactly the same as. Um, what uh Neptune described like it's exactly the same like it's it's very difficult for for a lot of there's a lot of rappers in south africa and it's difficult for them to to get anywhere because they're all in the same oversaturated lane in mm. a market that's way too small for them like, yeah you can't all do hip-hop and like like mambo rap like you can't all do mambo rap in south africa yeah and expect to, <laughs> to be <laughs> come paid. on yeah like, yeah yeah have Say that. Of originality like mm -hmm. like it's that's why the only reason why i've made strides is because i can do multiple genres like if you come to me like you're not going to be afraid to come to me with one with a different genre to what you've heard me done before um, do before because mm -hmm. yeah. i can do a bit of everything and mm -hmm. that's um a, a key skill in the, in the south african and global african market yeah. we have a few artists that are making global waves like Shaw my jersey the, the the woman from john cena mm -hmm. she made global waves but why because her music is a true reflection of where she's from Lim so, yeah. South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. when you hear music you're like oh my gosh let me learn the guara because you yeah. it's so original like you've never heard it burn a boy burn a boy collaborated with Ooh. so many people from south africa before he's he's literally to us, he's South African. Even though he's African, I heard Burner Boy when I was in high school. He was collaborating with a lot of South African artists. Mm. He blew up here before he blew up anywhere else. And his sound is so unique. Yeah. That's why he can make global waves. There's so many. Um, but yeah, like slowly but surely, our market is opening up now. And the standard of music is it's slowly rising, I would say. Mm -hmm. um we have an um def jam um records recently opened up a an, an asian uh, sector and an african sector and the offices are in johannesburg so recently they started signing quite a few south african artists mm -hmm. which is good um, which is good but the cape town market is still untapped i feel like everybody knows you don't go to cape town to do um music you go to johannesburg and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I kind of prefer staying in Cape Town hmm. because like, damn, right. I'm going to be the first person to do it here. Like, here, yeah, it doesn't exactly. count as you're like the last that. person. It counts as yeah, the dude. first person. So that's why I'm staying here because I'm like, like yeah. everyone's going there. So I'm just going to like, like, I don't know, like somehow make it work. I totally just relate to that like, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I find because here in Edmonton, it's about a million people population people always say oh vancouver or toronto those are the places to be for music and i feel like it's the same with the states mm -hmm. like la and nashville those are the places to be but it's actually almost more beneficial if you can get a crowd in your smaller area and really build yourself up with the back community and eventually yeah maybe yes. you get to that point where you could move to la or whatnot but why not build up what you have where you are <laughs> Because there's so build up many a people. Solid base. Yeah, and there's so many people in LA, yes. for example, or Nashville, or anywhere where it's just difficult. It's difficult to stand out. And I'm sure you guys have all 
experience that feeling for sure but it's if, uh, it's hard if you it's go hard. if you go to LA without like a solid base from where you're from like yes. you're not no no one's gonna notice you because there's so many sharks swimming in that tank yes. you know yeah you're just gonna wash out absolutely yeah. um Thomas my next question is actually I want to start with you with this one um okay. do you think that putting in the work for music is done better as a group or as a solo artist I'm curious to know what you think yeah well you know, I, I guess that, that would be a, it just depends on what kind of music you want to make and what you're going for. For me, it's like, a, I, I love playing with uh, with my, my friends and I, I feel mm -hmm. like uh, for the style of music we're going for, for like the rock and roll kind of kind of thing we're doing, punk rock, uh, it works a lot better when we're all collaborating because uh, like just having like an actual drummer, like write the drums and an actual mm -hmm. bassist write the bass and the, um, the mm. guitars play the guitar rather than just mm. creating it on synth. As, as much mm. as I respect people who can do all that, like um, yeah. it's just like for the sound we're trying to achieve it, I think it's real important for us to do that. That's why when we, we have the brass instruments on some songs, we'll actually have people come in and like record it. We won't just do it like a, right. you know, like a, a synth track on there. I, I right. But I also respect the people who are who are able to just like produce all the stuff themselves. That like I I couldn't do that. I, like I <laughs> like that. I, I you were touching on it a minute a minute ago with the mediocre music. It's like um oh, like I we we pay people to record our music. Like we can do it ourselves, but like it's not gonna like you. I want to have a quality. If I'm gonna do it, like I don't want to waste my time doing something yeah. that doesn't sound as good as possible. So absolutely like, say that. Mm hmm I totally agree. Yeah. Um, now, I guess I kind of want to shift this question because I was, I want to kind of get your band experience because I know we've got some kind of solo artists too here, but um, I want to kind of open this next question up to everybody. But in your opinion, is it better to have big goals for yourself, like really reaching for the stars, or is it better to have smaller, more defined goals for yourself? Which do you have for yourself or which do you think works better in your opinion? Um, Definitely, definitely for me, like I have smaller goals. Um, it really depends on the type of person that you are. Like I, I don't have a large attention span always. And I find that I get more things done when I have smaller goals. I mean, in the back of your mind, you have a bigger goal, but mm -hmm. I prefer just dividing. Like I plan everything out, but I divide it in smaller steps so that you also get a bit of momentum that way. And you feel like you are, you don't feel like, it's something that you can't reach because like every time you tick off a, a smaller goal, like you feel it getting closer. Like mm -hmm. it's not some imaginable, unimaginable target that you can't possibly reach. So it's, yeah. for me, it's much easier to have smaller goals. Um, mm -hmm. But because I have smaller goals, it doesn't mean that that's the destination. Like the destination is obviously greatness, but mm -hmm. you, you got to take smaller goals to get there. You need every single step. It's all important. Because if you skip one, you can slip up in future. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's never good. It always catches up to you when you skip steps like we spoke about earlier. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Neptune, what do you kind of think on that? Do you think it's better to have big goals or the smaller defined goals? I have literally never in my life had a small goal. That's <laughs> 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 me. Like I would have no, to just tell that's me. True. You should start with something small. And I was like, yeah, see, I want to be a billionaire. So I don't think small goals are my thing. <laughs> um, I really think it just depends on the person that you are. I noticed that some producers more have, uh, like, strict, j strictly just produced. They tend to have smaller goals mm -hmm. that turn into astronomical things that they didn't even think could happen. And then you have people who are really at the forefront who they see the glitz, they see the glamour, they see the lights, they see the crowds, they see the fashion, they see the sages, and it's just, that's their thing. And then you have some people who are just in between. Like, me personally, I think playing for 50,000 people isn't so far a dream, mainly because I've already performed in front of, a, like, a few thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's, <laughs> it's just, it just depends on what your, I, I think it's, it's about, perception mm. it's, a, it's an individual perception what your idea of big and small are yeah oh yeah absolutely mm. how about yourself thomas what do you kind of think for your band what do you guys kind of have set for yourself smaller or those bigger bigger goals 
Oh, well, it's like Clayton said. I, I think it's real important to have both because, like, you're not. It, it, I feel like it's important to make strides, and so, mm -hmm. like, I, of course, we have the bigger goals and where we want to take it eventually. But just like those smaller, accomplishable goals, like, all right, we got to get our merch done by next week so we can go on two or three weeks mm -hmm. after that. It, mm -hmm. It's like if, if we're not accomplishing something where it's like setting small goals that we we can do it. it um, you don't feel as like feel like you're moving as, as far and I, I think that's a real important thing for longevity wise you know yeah that's a good point actually keep going. I, like, I like the longevity yeah absolutely um now I have one last question before we're finished today um what advice would you give to someone who is ready to buckle down and let's quote unquote say put in the work for their music what advice would you give them if you could give kind of one sentence one strong quote of advice what would you give them Have the eye of the fucking tiger. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> God, you have to, you have to go after this shit like you are a lion in mm -hmm. the oh, in yep. on a plane about to attack. You have to be so <laughs> hungry for this shit. Oh God, you you have to wake up and think mm -hmm. about this shit. Go about your day and think about this shit sleep and dream about this shit and then do it all over again mm -hmm. you have to literally eat this shit breathe this shit like this has to be this has to consume you actually and like mm -hmm. if it's not what you're thinking about at all times and if it doesn't help you get through your day what are you doing i had when i was in a i was in a professional mm -hmm. music camp for like two years in a row and our a and r teacher was like can you see yourself doing something else I need you to answer that mm -hmm. like to yourself. He was like, that's like, just answer for yourself. Yeah. He was like, now, if you can see yourself doing something else, do it. Mm. Cause if you can see yourself doing something else, this isn't for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And that was, mm. that was one of the most remarkable things. <laughs> and one of the most significant pieces of advice I've ever been given. And I was like, can I actually see myself doing something else? And at the time my mom was like, well, you need a backup plan. You're just in culinary, you can do that. I was like, mm -hmm. man, fuck that. I'm not <laughs> gonna be no chef in somebody's kitchen. I'm gonna be in my yeah. own damn kitchen called the studio, making some hot shit. And if I get hungry, I'm gonna go in the actual kitchen, make me That's some vegan, awesome. vegan chicken wings and do what the hell I gotta do in that book. <laughs> I'm, you have to seriously love this shit to the point where it, you, it needs to be able to break you down and mm -hmm. pick you back up and you gotta have the you have to have the titanium balls to get the hell back up yeah absolutely and do this shit over again you have to be knocked down you will get knocked down mm -hmm. so many times have people tell you what they think your sound should be how you should dress how mm. you should speak like you will have people who don't even do this shit try and give their pieces of advice and tell you how you should be doing things. Yeah. And you have to take that shit with a grain of salt and be mm -hmm. able to see, okay, was that a sign or was that a bitter ass bitch? Mm. Probably a bitter ass bitch. Let me keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, preach. <laughs> now, uh, Soulful yeah. Clay, I wanna hear kind of your advice you would give to someone. Well, I would, I would definitely say you need to have that eye of the tiger, like uh, Neptune said. I would again mm -hmm. say analyze your market like know who, who your competition is at that time like because a lot of people they don't <laughs> they think that they have the starting per um, um, perception they think that they're really like Beyonce and everyone else is beneath them know who your competition is here's like a quick example if somebody comments on your post a fellow artist just know that <laughs> As much as one side can argue that yes, they support you, another side of it is that they don't see you as a threat. <laughs> as soon as they don't comment on your post, just know you're doing something right. Yeah. That's what I that's what I need to do. <laughs> the things that I never said. If they don't comment, they are scared. That's that's when you know you're doing something right. When all these artists are commenting on my post, fellow artists, I'm like, no, I need to step my game up. Yeah. So you know, yeah, sure. you need to feel intimidated. You, need to you got it, man. My work. That's what I'm like, spitting, yo. I'm not criticizing my work. It's it's clearly not. It's it's not at the level where you're touched because a lot of um, people who give criticism they murder what they're lacking inside. They yeah. murder the insecurities they projected. They saying no, you your low end is bad. Even though maybe your low end is just a bit a bit loud. They'll say your low end is terrible. 
Mm-hmm. Just know that you, you you might be doing something, but they're listening to it though. Mm-hmm. That's very mm-hmm. important. Making impact, making impact, and then again, yeah, having a plan is very very important because yeah. you can make that impact and fizzle out just so quickly. Like mm-hmm. it can one day you're hot, the next day you're nothing. Yeah, but it's it comes down to having a solid basis of music, yeah. understanding your market specific to your region. Um, whether you're in Denver, in Colorado, or in Cape Town, you need mm-hmm. to know your market. Networking, mm-hmm. networking is very important. Yeah. As much as making music is very important, but you can play in that same bar for ten years, and you might never, you might never escape that bar. You might be sixty years old, getting yeah. pension from the government, still playing in that same bar mm-hmm. because you're not getting out there. You need to network. The people mm-hmm. who is going to invest in your craft. They're not sitting in that bar most of the time. They're probably at home with their families, like having dinner. Yeah. But you need to like, like when Millie messaged um, when Millie messaged me, I looked at my DMs and I was like, who is this? Like I've never seen this person in my life. <laughs> but I was like, okay, cool. I might meet some cool people in yeah. this round table, and I did, and it led to a great discussion. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Um, but yeah, lastly, my last point is just have thick skin because. Mm-hmm. As much as it's important to, to have an impact and to be able to hit and throw those punches, if you can't take punches, then I don't know, I don't think the music game is for you. Yeah. You should probably go into accounting or maybe a more a more <laughs> stable uh, <laughs> stable source of income. You know, this place is not for you. Yeah. So yeah, that, those are my those are my words. Absolutely. That was that's great to hear. I love to hear that. Um, now, Thomas, can you kind of finish us off with some of your advice that you would give to someone who wants to start putting in the work? I got you. Y'all hit the nail on the head right there. <laughs> but let me just say, uh, get ready to be embarrassed. Like there's going to be real good times. You're going to love it. But you got to get ready mm. to go from playing to like 1500 people one day to like playing in a small ass bar with three people yes. the next day. Yes. And, and love it. Love it. Like don't don't take it for granted because if you if you end up making it you're never going to get it back mm. just like yeah. enjoy enjoy the journey because it's going to be a long one if you really stick with it and uh, mm-hmm. you got to just take every second of it and real really enjoy it i think it's important absolutely i think you all hit the nail on the head with your advice <laughs> and that's some really great <laughs> stuff to hear um so that was actually our last question for the day we are out of time we are so lucky to have had you guys all on today if you're at home watching this round table with vienna white on youtube uh, make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell button because we post uh, two shows daily monday to friday so there's lots of content to watch um, if you want to hear this conversation podcast style just search up the vienna white podcast on spotify now, before we head out, could I get you all to say your stage name and then your social media brand or brand at of where we can find you? Uh, Soulful Clay, can you start it off? Um, my name is Soulful Clay, um, artist, singer, producer, songwriter. Um, yeah, my Instagram is at Soulful Clay. My YouTube is at Soulful Clay. Not much content on the YouTube, but Instagram is my main uh, Content stream, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Neptune, can you sign yourself off? Yes, my name is Neptune. It's spelled N3, P-T-U-N-E. Please don't forget that three. If there's not a three in it, it's not me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can be found on Instagram uh, and Twitter and Facebook at Neptune Music, spelled the same way, N3, P-T-U-N-E, music. Um, same with YouTube, N3, P-T-U-N-E, music. Um, SoundCloud as well. I'm on all streaming services. Uh, check out my music and I will see you all on the big screen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and Thomas, can you sign yourself out as your band? <laughs> sure. My name is Thomas Hockenbach. I play guitar and cardboard boxer. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Music, but cardboard boxer band, look it up. Not the awesome. movie, we're the band. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm stoked to hear all your guys' music. I'm, yes, I, I'm really same. excited to check it out. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It was great it was meeting fun. you all. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Stay safe. You as well. Yeah, Bye. thanks. You too. Yeah, take care. <laughs>